What's up guys, it's Pixelated Apollo, thanks for stopping by, hope you guys are doing well, and I welcome you to the final part of our three-part mini-battle series on the Battle of Antietam. This is the afternoon phase known as Burnside's Bridge, and before we get started with this battle, I have a very exciting announcement, especially if you're following War of Rights. So just last night, I formed my very own company, and you're probably wondering who? Who am I fighting for? Am I fighting for the Union or, I, or am I fighting for the South? Well, I decided to go with the South. Now, I wanted to make a company for both sides so we could really experience it all, but you can only make one company, which, you know, it makes sense. And I was looking at all the players. There's actually more companies and players for the Union. So just to balance it out, just to go with the underdogs, I went with the South. Also, I was raised in Georgia, so I formed a Georgia company. So we are going to be the 24th Georgia Company B. So if you guys want to join, I need some volunteers. I need to enlist you guys. Now, I can only enlist 100 people, so I can't promise everyone a spot. So the quicker you do it, the better. Uh, I'm looking for players that are more mature. Uh, this is not going to be like Call to Arms. This is going to be a little bit more serious. That way we can be somewhat competitive on the battlefield. I want people to be afraid when they see our colors on the battlefield. Uh, so we're going to have like practice and drills and, and stuff like that. I'm going to try to, you know, make sure to have the, the correct terminology for certain for certain tactics and orders. So I'm gonna be taking it pretty seriously. So I, I definitely want players who are going to do the same. And it's gonna be really fun. So in case you're wondering how exactly you join the company, there is a link down below. You do not have to own the game. I'm sure most of you guys already know that the game is still in, uh, I think it's in technical alpha, whatever that exactly means. Uh, so it still has a long way to go. Uh, so it's not going to be ready quite yet, but I just want to get the company ready. That way, when it is ready, we'll be ready as a company to do some pretty uh, pretty big events. Uh, so please uh, go to the link down below. That will take you to the website. Then you gotta you got to go to company tools, and there you can log in, set up an account, and it's really cool. It's, there's a lot of role-playing stuff, so you can you know say where you're born and what your job is. and. Uh, so, and then just look for George, 24 Georgia Company B, not Company A, because there is a Company A. We're going with Company B. Look for that, and I will try to enlist you. So once again, guys, looking for more mature players. That doesn't mean you have to be a certain age. It, all ages are welcome. I'm just looking for players who are going to take it uh, somewhat seriously. So also, there's going to be a link to the Steam page for War of Rights. In that Steam or Steam page, Steam group, whatever you want to call it, in the Steam group, they will make uh, announcements whenever they're doing events. If by any chance you own the game as of right now, uh, so definitely check that stuff out. And I hope to see you in in the company. And it's it's going to be some exciting time. All right. So now that we got that out of the way, we can finally talk about what happens here during this phase of the battle. So it starts around 10 a.m. and ends around 4:30 p.m. And if you look on the map here, it's just to show you where. Where we're located it's the uh, the southern parts of Lee's army Lee's uh, battle lines the Union actually has an opportunity here of breaking through this bridge and getting behind Confederate forces taking control of Sharpsburg and causing a lot of chaos now I think originally this assault on the bridge was more of a diversion to support Union troops who are attacking the center lines near Sunken Road and of course leading the assault we have Burnside General Burnside with the very iconic mustache uh, he, he he looks fantastic, uh, but he's leading about 12,500 troops in total, and the Confederates are defending, at this point, around 3,000 men. So they're greatly outnumbered, and I think they're outnumbered artillery-wise as well. So it's going to be pretty rough for the Confederates, but they do have one advantage, which is the terrain advantage and the positioning advantage, where, you know, they don't have to cross the bridge. The Union has to cross the bridge, uh, so they got to try to use that against them. Now, there's also a couple other crossings uh, on or in the creek or through the creek there's a little land bridge right here a ford that the uh, the union can use i think there's another one way over here uh, that they can use now historically i think there's another bridge it was called middle bridge but this map is just not big enough to show you it'd be like way down there so it's pretty far away uh, but yeah, he's got to cross this bridge, and he's pretty cautious about it, and he loses a lot of troops trying to cross, 
and uh, a lot of generals getting upset. He's getting a lot of messages like, hey, I don't care how many troops it, it takes, cross this bridge, break through, defeat the Confederates. And uh, eventually, he does break through the bridge, and the Confederates are on the run. A lot of uh, chaos with the Confederate troops over at Sharpsburg, which you can see Sharpsburg. That's the city. I know it doesn't look like much, but the little towns and the dirt road. Uh, so there's a lot of chaos, but this is around 3 p.m. where Burnside finally gets the momentum going, right? He's like, all right, we might take this bridge. A lot of his troops have crossed the bridge. But then all of a sudden, A.P. Hill shows up about 3.30 uh, uh, p.m. with his light division. So A.P. Hill, he shows up with some fresh troops. And uh, Burnside, he's, he, he notices this. He's like, well, rip us, I guess. So, and he falls back. Uh, for, uh, to the other side of the bridge. So all that progress he made pushing and pushing back the, the Confederates, he lost it all. And then he asked for more men. He needed more men. He needed more artillery. But uh, it just, it wasn't there. So once again, this battle ends in a stalemate, even though he made so much progress taking that bridge. And he could have potentially really ended this battle by... I mean, there's a lot of opportunities for the Union to end this battle, uh, but it just didn't happen. So uh, that's just a, like a little brief rundown of the Battle of Burnside's Bridge. All right, so let's let the battle begin. So I'm commanding one of the Confederate forces. This is a three versus three. Oh my God, that trumpet is loud. Okay, so yeah, three versus three. Uh, and I have the honor of uh, having the small small defending force around the bridge we got a couple of georgia regiments in fact i think all the outer defending troops so we got georgia here and we actually have two georgia regiments i went way past it right here so yeah over at the other side defending the river crossing that the union is most likely going to attempt to cross i think he's got some ohio regiments ready to cross the uh the, the land bridge so he's got about three right here lots of troops 163 175 and 100 so that's a lot and then and then over here he's actually already cr crossing the bridge which i think is smart so he's got the 11th connecticut and i by the way i think the player commanding this force is happy meal and uh he's crossing the bridge and i think this is smart to be so aggressive because uh, like I said, there's going to be some Confederate reinforcements. A.P. Hill is going to show up later. The rest of the Jones Division is going to show up a little bit later. So I think for the Union, and I'm not even talking historically. I'm saying the gameplay in this, the best thing to do is try to be super aggressive and establish a nice battle line on top of the hill and get ready for the rest of the Confederate reinforcements. But this is where I kind of surprise. Look at that. Oh, the smoke from the tree line. I surprised these troops. I don't think the player saw my troops there and uh, he kind of freaked out there. Now he's actually going back in. His troops are active but they're steady which is pretty good. Uh, he's gonna go straight for a bayonet charge. I think he should go for uh, just I think he should just do a line battle like a nice you know fire. You do some volleys is what I'm trying to say instead of just charging into melee right away because he's got the numbers uh, melee is a strange thing. Uh, melee, even though you have more troops, my troops are fresh and they're confident. His troops are tired and they're wavering. They're shaken, but not stirred. So I, I think it would have been a better situation to sit back and fire his guns a couple volleys, then charge in. I think that would have made a huge difference. But as of right, I'm not saying I'm going to win this engagement, but as of right now, my, my second Georgia Jones division 62 men yes they do break them they do break them excellent and uh, they don't just break holy crap that trumpet that trumpet's gonna be so so loud uh, but not only do they break but they shattered so that means they will not return to the battlefield 140 men that is just so tragic for the union uh, let's go back to the other side where the uh, the little land bridge where the ohio regiments are starting to form up now again i'm heavily outnumbered on this side as well but i do have the high ground and i have protection of trees so i'm going to use my 50th 50th georgia and i have what is this the 11th georgia what i'm going to do here is just kind of kite them a little bit i don't really expect to win in this engagement uh, just try to soften them up until AP Hill sends up some reinforcements, uh, which he's he's still pretty far. He's just kind of taking his time. What's the rush? It's not like the Union's coming over with 12,000 troops. You know, take your time, whatever. 
Uh, we do have some friendly artillery setting up on this side. Actually, I think this is my artillery. I don't know. It's someone's artillery. Actually, you know what? I think this is my artillery. I, it doesn't matter. We've got like three units of artillery uh, bombarding the Union artillery, which has got a really nice position up on this hill. It's even got some trees on the slope of the hill, which kind of gives some protection against cannonballs and whatnot. I don't know if it actually does that, but uh, in real life, I can imagine it would. I don't know if it does it in this game. Uh, so, yeah, 5th U.S. Battery, A, 3rd Division, 9th Corps. Ninth Corps. It's just so cool that you can see in detail the the regiments, the divisions, the corps. It's pretty cool. I really, I really enjoy that about this mod. It just it brings it to life. And they, they, they these aren't just like random regiments. They, they, they're actually historic. Why are words so hard today? My God. Uh, so it's you know this is actually my second time recording this battle because the first time it crashed. So maybe it's just a little frustration of. Just how unstable this mod is, but you just you just got to deal with it. That's just mods for you uh, So there we go. I'm gonna fall back now because I realize he's trying to out out maneuver out maneuver me with all those extra troops He has so I don't want that to happen So he's got this regiment right here Which is the 23rd Ohio trying to go up on the high ground and get around me So I don't want to let that happen I'm gonna fall back stretch out my lines as long as possible and hold them back as and hold them back as long as possible uh, Let's go back to the other side and see what the Union's up to all right So he's moving up some troops now at this point in the battle. It's kind of like it's too late for the Union I think the Union needs to take a slow and steady approach I know that's tough to say, and it's it's a difficult situation for the Union, uh, but the Confederates just have such a great position, and we have the rest of Jones' division showing up as reinforcements. So it's n so nice, even though these are small small reg uh, regiments here. It's so nice to have the extra troops here to help support this bridge. I mean, I was holding back with just two two lines, which is uh, pretty crazy. Uh, but finally, yeah, the Confederates are now gonna fire back. Do some shots before they, uh, <laughs> some shots. <laughs> Get, <laughs> like, I just envision them doing shots before crossing the bridge, which I wouldn't blame them. Uh, but they're getting some shots. They're firing some shots towards our defenses. Not really sure how effective they are at, at this distance. I'm sure, they're, I'm sure they're getting a couple hits here and there. But because of the reinforcements coming up from Jones' division, I don't think it's going to be super, uh, super effective in the long run. Because we have all these fresh troops. Okay, so while that's going on, let's go back over to the other side where you can see on the minimap, he's actually forming a little bit of a U-shape around my two my two lines. Uh, so I've got the 50th, 50th Georgia, which has 107 men, which is crazy. They've been fighting here for a decent amount of time. I've only lost a couple. I, I haven't lost huge numbers, but I've got them stretched out in a way that they're fighting against two of their lines. Uh, so they're fighting the 23rd Ohio, and then over in the center, they're fighting the 12th Ohio. So it's a, it's a little bit of an awkward fight. And then I've got my smaller regiment over here, the 11th Georgia. They're trying to support as much as they can. Uh, AP Hill's artillery was able to uh, maneuver over here pretty quickly because they're horse artillery. So... Um, they're setting up. I look, actually, it looks like he's lumbering up. I think he's going to get a little bit closer. But if you look on the mini-map, here comes the rest of his reinforcements. So AP Hill, he actually divided his troops into two parts. So he's got a good uh, section of his troops going over to the center. And then he has a decent number of troops going over to the, uh, the right flank trying to defend that land bridge. Let's go back over here where the Union is actually going for a massive bridge crossing he's got one two three four five regiments crossing he's gonna try to use his numbers here it's kind of like a do or die situation the 89th new york leading the way i still have my second georgia they're down to 51 men but they stand like a solid stone and they're not gonna break it doesn't matter how many blue coats they send after them they're gonna hold their line against such reckless hate <laughs> there goes the charge of the Union forces. Yeah, I don't really... Well, actually... Actually, the morale is green for my troops. And for his, it's turning yellow for multiple uh, multiple regiments. Look at this massive swarm of Union Federal troops 
And look at, they're just using brute force to break through my lines. So I think that's the smart thing to do. Artillery actually getting awfully close. Uh, he might as well fire the artillery into this huge mass because even if he gets friendly fire, it really doesn't matter because I'm down to what? I'm down to, uh, who knows? Oh my God, there's a regiment in here with like 400 troops. 450. I think it's the Rhode Island regiment. That's crazy. Alright, so I'm down to... I can't even see. Oh, there they go. They break. Uh, but, you know, considering the situation, they fought bravely and they held back the Union forces. Now the Union's going to continue to push. We do have uh, some Confederate artillery uh, that's in danger. I mean, he's got to switch the canister shot. You can see the Union forces are soon going to arrive from the tree line. So here comes the mighty Union pushing back the Confederate defenses. But again, we have reinforcements forming up over on this side of 24th Virginia. And we have the 17th Virginia forming up. Let's see if my artillery can hold. Oh, I think, oh, nice canister shot. Again, I think that's my my allies artillery because I, I remember uh, telling him like, hey, like protect your artillery because here comes the Union. Uh, so the Union making a mistake here, of just kind of clumping up a little too much. Let's see if the uh, artillery can continue to bombard. Let's. This is just. I love canister shots so much. It's just too great. Here we go. I think they're trying to form a line. Why does it look like the Confederates are are charging their own artillery? What is going on? Oh, nice. There we go. Just, just poking holes in the 89th New York. Oh my God! Friendly fire. They shoot their own men. Did you see that? That's unfortunate. And they, wow, the Confederates are actually charging in against uh, superior numbers. And they break the Union forces. So the Union's trying to form a battle line here to get some shots off. But because of being so passive, I think he should have just kept on charging. I think he should have uh, tried to uh, wipe. Oh my god! It's Connecticut. Look at this. The, look at the size of this. The 16th Connecticut. 436 troops. I've never seen one so large. This is beautiful. <laughs> This is too great. So this, well, the 16th Connecticut, they're trying to focus down uh, some troops that are behind the fence line. We got the first Virginia. So they're using that uh, that fencing to really protect their troops. Over on this side, I'm actually still holding. Look at that. The brave 50th, 50th Georgia. And unfortunately they break as soon as I say that. Uh, but yeah, they're falling back, but that's okay. They did their job because now AP is met AP's men. They're right on top of the hill They're gonna form up pretty quickly just marching in column formation, which is pretty cinematic love that that's so cool So they're gonna be in position. So I th again, I think I did my job and uh, you know, actually I still have some troops over here It's the 11th Georgia Just the terrain is really weird. It's just it's keeping them alive because of the angles and whatnot uh, let's head back over to the other side because that's the the juicy part of the battle Okay, so more Union lines deciding to take it slow. Oh my god. That is just so epic Look at that all these Union troops firing. It's a little chaotic here. He might be getting some friendly fire Oh god, he's clumping up for some artillery. You definitely want to definitely don't want to do that We got another wave of troops marching forward. God the shots the, the volleys are really going crazy You can hear the crackle of the guns left and right now he's got, let's see, what is this? The 2nd Maryland, 1st Brigade, 2nd Division, 9th Corps. They're lining up. Oh, oh, we got we got another regiment over here. The 9th New York, 1st Brigade, 3rd Division, 9th Corps. So he's pushing on the flank once again. So the Union, once again, is going to try to outflank. Let's see what's happening over here. Oh my god, we had a massive bayonet charge. Just, it, this battle is getting really bloody. And the Union, that original Union uh, charge is now breaking. So we got the 16th Connecticut, who originally had 463 men, now down to 276. I imagine that they lost a lot to a lot of uh, rebel canister shot and uh, bayonet charges and volleys. So, unfortunate for them. Are they breaking? Yeah, they're breaking. They're routing. And they're shattered. They're just going the wrong way. It's like they want to die. I don't know what they're doing. You should head back. And look at, oh god, look at all the Confederate lines now. They will not even give them an inch. And now things have gotten extremely difficult for Union troops. 
as they mass more and more men to cross this bridge. We've got the 5th South Carolina, Jenkins Brigade, Jones Division, Longstreet's Corps. Uh, so yeah, once again, I think the Union, at this point, they've got to take a slower approach. And they should also send more men over around the flank at the other, uh, the land bridge. Because just sending all these troops in this one direction has not paid off. Uh, he is sending one, uh, he's got the second Maryland flanking around to the right side on the Union point of view. Uh, they are getting shot at. And he thought he was being sneaky, but I knew he was doing that since the very beginning. I just didn't really care because their morale was pretty low at the time. And it's just a unit of 89 men, so I was like, oh, whatever. It's not going to be a big deal. My main concern is this right here. Look at this. Another massive swarm. We've got another... Oh, my God. The 36 Ohio has 436 men. It's just not working, guys. Union this is not going to pay off. And, oh, here comes even more reinforcements. AP Hills Division. Showing up right on time. So let's get a bird's eye view of this. Oh yeah, look at that nice line. The rebel forces firing down in the flank of the Union. Pretty soon AP Hill is going to be able to... Oh my god, look at the death right here of Union. That is insane. So yeah, the, the fresh troops are going to form a nice straight line around this artillery. And most likely they will stop the Union troops who are just in this just cluster march formation. Uh, again, I feel like the players made a big mistake of not spreading out their troops and uh, trying to be as effective as possible with these guys he might have like instead of going into waves i think he should have just waited for all of his men to to mass up and then charge across the bridge i mean i don't really know this is just a really difficult situation for the union yeah it's just like also the terrain so you got to give him credit there where the train is just really difficult to form up on it's just like a death valley. Even the sun is in their eyes. There's the Union in the tree lines. Finally, finally being able to set up a proper battle line before breaking. Got the 14th South Carolina. First South Carolina. 13th South Carolina oh my god Union what are you doing oh I think he's gonna charge the fence line because he's got the 17th Virginia firing on his flank let's see come on Union forces walk through the fence line and charge as troops are fresh so he could actually pull off a pretty effective bayonet charge there he goes there he goes nice so I think he's trying to break the center lines, maybe even possibly get to the artillery. Oh, he, he's at, he's definitely breaking this this regiment. He's breaking the 17th Virginia. We got extra Confederate for uh, reinforcements charging in. It's the first South Carolina. What is this? Is this an artillery piece? Oh, they break them though. I don't think he should have charged. I think he just he should have hanged back, continued to fire. Uh, the artillery, though, still in a great position. He, he can actually change targets, do a canister shot. Uh, real quick, let's see what's going on on the over, on the uh, the other side. Where, yep, yep, we've got uh, finally AP, AP Hills Division uh, now just finishing the job. I think, you know what, guys? Call me crazy, but the 11th Georgia is still alive over on this side still alive what are they firing at i have no idea but they're still in the game which is just great it's fantastic uh, i'm i'm amazed that they're still alive over here and they actually have an opportunity to fire at the backs of the 30th ohio i think i was focused oh there we go bayonet charge so my men are tired though and it's an uphill charge i don't know how effective this is going to be i think i told my ally to also charge in or maybe he's just going to hang back in the tree line. Fire his men. Or, or not in the tree line, but you know what I mean. In the trees. Fire his, uh, fire his bullets. Eleventh GA Anderson Brigade. You hold, your bastards. 
Oh no, I'm losing a lot there. Come on, remember your training, men. What is that? To Wait, are they fighting each other? Why are the you? Wait, no. Th that looks like a union. Okay, it's it's a confederate. I was like, whoa, hold on. The uniforms looked identical, and it looked like the union troops in the chaos of this of this uh, bayonet charge. They were fighting each other. Oh, the officer going in. Look at him. Look at him. The uh, let's see. Boy, just based on his uh, uniform, what would that be? A uh, a colonel? I'm pretty sure. Or a captain? I don't know. Who knows? So amazingly enough, the 11th Georgia still fighting their hearts out. The officer getting a couple kills. They're down to 16 men, and they still believe. They're fighting against 118. And look at the morale difference. It's not that different. Where's my ally? Come on, ally. Charge in. Oh, the morale. The morale. Are we going to break these guys? With 11 men. Oh, my God. No. No. They're fatigued. They're tired. They're exhausted. There goes the flag. Oh, the colors are down and they break. But they fought like champions today. Don't be ashamed. And then, oh no, we got the 30th Ohio. They're now repositioning. I'm gonna fire, fire the troops, at the, fire the backs of my troops. And uh, once again, yeah, we defeated the Union. They're falling back. They realize that. Look at, look at this long line of routing troops. Look at this. Just no, no hope on taking this bridge. So it's, I guess it kind of played out very similar to the actual battle. Not exactly. Because the Union was actually able to push a little bit more. But he had to fall back uh, across the bridge. And now I'm moving up some of my uh, some of my troops here. 51st Georgia. The 15th South Carolina. Just getting some pop shots. Just pop shots as they retreat across the bridge. Uh, so yeah, the balance of power is actually still pretty even considering the the battle so far. Considering that the Union has lost like thousands of troops. But I think we agreed just to make this battle a little bit more interesting. We were gonna uh, do a counter charge across the bridge and face the Union defenses. And uh, let's see what's going on here. We actually had a little bit of an engagement here, guys. Uh, let's see, where did it happen? Remember that that uh, force of Union forces that were walking this way? Uh, they actually got pretty far around our army, and we had to fight them off. I don't know where exactly did that happen. I'm not sure, but it happened, guys. Trust me. That's why we got a couple troops who are going back. Uh, because they had to take care of that flanking Union force. Oh god, is he charging in more? The 28th Ohio? <laughs> see if he gets some shots here. Is he gonna try to fire back? I'm not exactly sure what he's... No, he's... He, I think he's gonna form a line and... Yep, there he goes. Is that good? What exactly is his plan here? Form a better line than that. Alright, let's head back over to this side where AP Hill is now running down... Uh, Union forces. What do we have down here? We actually have a general. <laughs> what is the general doing? He's just like, I don't want to live anymore. We're not going to win this war. I can't take it anymore. He's charging up the hill. Uh, AP Hill's men. Uh, they're now firing down at the general. I don't know if this was a misclick. You know, actually, I think one of the players disconnected. And uh, most of his army was dead anyways. And I think the AI is just taking control. And, you know, the AI is just stupid. Setting up their general right in the front line. I don't know why the AI is just... Well, like, why why are they so dumb? I just don't get it. I, I really don't... For Total War, the AI is just so bad. So bad. For, like, all titles. I just hope in future titles, AI will uh, kind of step up their game. Okay, so now we're approaching the bridge. We're going to do a counter-attack. Oh, we have a lot of Union troops. He still has a ton, guys. He's got it. He's got it. He's got the sixth. Let's see, ninth New Hampshire, thirty-fifth Massachusetts, forty-eighth Pennsylvania. Uh, he's asked, he's actually got this really nice slope as well. Uh, but we've got a huge flanking force of Confederate troops 
who are now firing and trying to soften them up from the flank. So this is mostly uh, AP Hill's division. They are getting hit pretty hard from that artillery, which is just glorious. Very cinematic. More Union lines setting up. God, he's got a lot of troops. Yeah, the Union gets a ton of troops here, but they all oh, look at that. That is too much. So cinematic. Not only do I love the, the crackle of the guns, but I also love the fact that they have the screaming sound effect of like men yelling and screaming, uh, which really just spices it up a little bit, you know? It feels very genuine. And here comes, here comes the uh, Confederate charge. AP Hill charging over. Look away, look away, Dick's a lamb. Oh my god, could you imagine charging into those lines of Union forces? It would be pretty terrifying. Here we go, here comes a counter charge from the Union. 51st, 51st New York against the 13th South Carolina. We got another charge here. We're going to take out General Burnside's position across the bridge. More bayonet charges. We're sending everything we got. Uh, we've, we still have a lot of reserves over here still firing at the sides, firing at the flanks of the Union. Uh, the Union has a couple of uh, regiments over here as well. So we're trying to fight back. There we go. We got more troops getting ready to push across. You can see push, push across. You can see them mobilizing. And we are winning this bayonet charge. Some of the troops are breaking. Well, actually, hold on. The Union... They're not done yet. You can see the morale still. Well, and there they go. Oh, here comes fresh legs charging in. What is this? The 48th Pennsylvania. They're going to go in and take on this huge blob of troops. Oh, the Confederates able to get a couple pop shots as the Union charges in. And that should be a big deal breaker right there. Yeah, that's going to break uh, the Confederate lines. But we got fresh legs over on the other side as well. See, we're actually really close to defeating the Union. I think they're down to two, three regiments. Regiments! And here comes AP Hill. Very nice. Artillery's still pretty active. Still have a lot of troops back here. I believe this is UD player who is commanding this force. So he's going to get ready to cross with the Archer's Brigade. Also, I want to note on the other side what's going on here is that uh, the Confederate troops, uh, the other half of AP Hill's division, victorious over on this side. So now we're actually going to do a counterattack, cross the bridge. You can see a lot of uh, Union forces breaking here. The 9th New York break. Wait, what is the 9th New York doing over there? I don't even remember. I remember the 9th New York crossing this bridge. I guess they walked all the way over on the hillside and attack the side, but they broke anyways. And uh, yeah, they're crossing and they're gonna try to head over to the the back sides, the back flank of uh, Union lines. We got another bayonet charge. And they are breaking our troops. We, we've got a lot more where that came from. Oh, the artillery hitting the side of the mountain there. Here we go, we got 7th Tennessee, 19th Georgia. I was hoping to see the 24th Georgia, but I was, I'm was i not sure if they fought. I think they did fight in a, at Antietam. 15th Georgia. Ah, dang it. Dang it. <laughs> there we go, those silent shots. Yeah, in case you didn't know, Union 
Union technology was extremely advanced. They could, they developed a silent gunpowder. It was amazing. <laughs> Are the unions now going for a bridge charge? Confederates going for in for a charge as well? Charge! So this is it, the final. Whoever wins this fight, well, honestly, if, if the Union wins this fight, it's probably still gonna lose, but you know what I mean. Looks like we're gonna win it, though. He is sending another, let's see, what is this, the 35th Massachusetts. They're gonna try to break their way through. I got the flags waving around. And of course, oh, we killed their general and we got a lot of flanking fire. 17th Georgia. I'm just trying to attack the, uh, the, the Union back lines. So it's great to have these extra troops. Artillery is still doing their job, still trying to soften up the, uh, the rebel lines. But at this point, again, I think it's pretty much, it's safe to say that the Confederates are going to win this one. Here comes the general as well. Trying to keep the men's morale high. Showing them that the general will fight with them. Oh my god, artillery came in. Crashing into Confederate forces. That was a pretty good hit. But will it be enough to break their lines? I don't think so. Just gotta kill that general. In fact, I think we did kill the general. So I think that's just mostly bodyguard at this point. Whew. There we go, there we go. They're starting to break. I think he's reforming his lines. He's falling back. Oh, there we go, there we go. It's, he was alive, actually. How close are these Confederate troops? Uh, they still got a long way to go. I mean, it is like two miles or so uh, from the bridge. There we go. Now we're, we're doing a counter cross of the bridge. Trying to uh, chase them down. Now all we have to do is take out the, uh, the Union artillery. The balance of power is greatly in favor. Yeah, glorious victory. And we'll just go ahead and fast forward because I'm pretty sure the Union just kind of give up. They just throw in their, their artillery into the fray. Just kind of charge him in because he's just conceding defeat. Uh, so yeah, this was, well, a lot of you guys were complaining that it was too hard for the Confederates to win. Uh, well, this one was a pretty decisive Confederate victory. Uh, so hopefully that kind of balances it balances it out uh, But yeah, this one does not play out, but most of these battles don't really play out historically uh, But hopefully this gives you a somewhat good view of the final phase of Antietam And this is gonna wrap up and it kind of makes it, it kind of makes me sad just seeing you know The the mini battle series is over Antietam. Uh, we've done everything uh, but it was it was a lot of fun, and I played with a lot of great people from the community. So again, I want to thank everyone who joined me throughout this battle. Yeah, that wraps series. it up. Here are the kills. I was leading Jones' division, getting 800 kills. Not that bad. Well, let's see. Well, I I think I, I could have done a little bit better there. Uh, my ally over here, who's leading AP Hill, getting 1,092 kills, but he had the largest force. And then of course we had uh, Richard H. Anderson getting 570. Over on the other side. Uh, some great uh, great kills unfortunately Rodman uh, Isaac P Rodman not uh, getting I think Rodman was the one who flanked around and crossed the ford uh, historically but he's only getting 212 and uh, 227 but we do have Jacob D Cox getting 1143 uh, so thank you guys so much for joining me during this mini series and uh, I'll see you next time